Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a requested video which is the best and worst from the Chanel perfume range. One of the, if not the number one best selling perfume range in history and right now in the whole world. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. It's all about perfumes. I have hundreds of perfume videos. Do subscribe if you're not already. I'd love to have you here. Let me know your requests for videos down below. I'm doing range reviews. I'm doing all all sorts of different videos so let me know what you want and welcome yeah so let's get into it guys so of course Chanel massive perfume house one of the most expensive from the mainstream perfumes and famous for their traditional Chanel number no. five but more recently the past sort of 20-30 years they've had some really big um, releases as well. I'm going to start on a positive note and go through my three best from the whole Chanel range. There are so many perfumes, maybe like 30 perfumes or something, if you count them all. So it was quite easy for me to pick the my three favorites just because I'm so familiar with the range. Like I used to sell the Chanel perfumes. And the one that I'm gonna start off with, number one is Coco Mademoiselle, which has been my mum's signature scent for many, many years. Whenever I smell it on anyone, all it just immediately takes me back to being at home, being around mum. So I, I used to wear it as well, but now it's like, I don't really want to smell the same as her. Like it's her smell, not mine. If you're not familiar with it, you probably will have smelled it because it is so popular, such a big seller. It's a beautiful patchouli with some orange and a rosy orange blossom as well. So it settles into a really warm orange patchouli. It has reasonable projection, especially in the first hour you can smell it. When you're very close to someone, you can smell it on them for quite a few hours. And all the body products that go with it really help layer it. It comes in Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum and it also comes in an intense version which I like even more than the original because in the intense they've kept that orangey rosy patchouli but then you've got some warm balmy um, tonka bean and vanilla so it's a little bit warmer, a little bit sweeter, it lasts longer, tonka bean really helps things last so I find this like an actual really good improvement on the original. It still smells just like Coco Mademoiselle but there's something else, something a bit warmer, slightly sweeter and it helps it last and helps with the projection as well. So you are looking at over £100 for a full size of this perfume, it's not cheap. But of course it is classic Chanel and the packaging and the presentation is just so iconic that it's definitely my favourite from the range. So next I am going to say my second favourite is Chanel Chance. Now there are loads of flankers of Chanel Chance. You've got OV, O Tendre, O Fresh, but I'm picking here the original Chance Eau de Parfum, the first one that came out. I know two people that wear this as like their signature scent and both of them, when I'm near them, I smell it, it reminds me of them, it has good lasting and good projection. So definitely recommend this is something that can become a sophisticated, classy, not overwhelming, but still something that people can smell on you and it becomes what you're known for. Again, there is patchouli in here and patchouli really helps perfumes last. I love patchouli in a, a fragrance but this also has a muskiness to it so a bit cleaner fresher um, not as feminine pretty flowery as Coco Mademoiselle more like a clean musky patchouli there's also some jasmine in here which makes it quite delicate and a hint of vanilla but it's definitely not a sweet perfume i'd say to me this is a musky patchouli it smells quite um good for work i think it's it's not particularly sexy but it is feminine so it's very neutral clean classy smell and then my number three favorite from chanel is the new version of gabrielle gabrielle essence so this is a fruity warm perfume with some lovely peachy notes in. This is definitely more like flowery white floral than the others. It doesn't have that patchouli in so it's pretty and white but it also has this 
um, coconut and apricotty, warmy notes in, black currant as well. So it's slightly fruity, but predominantly white floral. But this smells interesting it smells very very feminine but i think those fruity notes in here make this very modern whereas if it was just the white florals it would perhaps be a bit old-fashioned but i love fruity notes and they make it warm and fun and make it a little bit more sexy a little bit more evening so i was um quite pleased with this new gabrielle essence so speaking of Gabrielle, I'm now going to go into my three worst perfumes from Chanel. And my first pick has to be the original Gabrielle. There was so much advertising for this, so much promotion, so much hype. Couldn't wait to smell it. You know, a whole brand new perfume from Chanel doesn't come round very often at all. So quite a big deal. You had Kirsten Stewart as the face of the fragrance. They've changed that now to Margot Robbie for um, the new Gabrielle Essence. But originally, Kirsten Stewart, she's quite a um, strong, almost androgynous woman. So I thought, that, wow, this is going to be really like heavy hitting, powerful, really interesting smell. Can't wait. Interesting choice um, of face of the fragrance. And basically, you guys, this was just such an anti-climax for me. It's so light. It's so unimpressive. It's not memorable to me at all. And it literally couldn't be more opposite to Kirsten Stewart. It's grapefruit, orange blossom. Then it has ylang ylang in, which I don't like. I find it an old-fashioned fragrance note. And it's just nice, you know. It's just like a fresh, zesty floral. But instantly forgettable doesn't have production, doesn't last, you know, not good value for money at all. And I was so disappointed when this came out. I feel like they must have heard this message because when they made Gabrielle Essence, it was much stronger, had these modern notes in it, these fruity notes, um, a bit sweeter, like it, you could really smell it and it was interesting, but original Gabrielle, don't recommend, big disappointment. Next um, on my least favourite is the Allure Sensual. Now, Chanel Allure is still going, but I don't think it sells that well. I'm sure some people still have it as their signature fragrance, but for me, there was no need to bring out another version of Allure, Allure Sensual, and it is one of those perfumes that has quite a lot of pepperiness in it. it. When you smell it, you get pepperiness. And I really dislike having pepper in a perfume. I know some people like it, fair enough. But I find it like, I don't want to smell like a cooking ingredient, like pepper, you know. I want to smell like some kind of flower, a citrus, a fruit, um, some kind of gourmand ingredient, maybe coffee, but just not pepper. I don't want to smell like a pepper. I, I just find it abrasive and annoying. It also has oak moss in and lavender, and I don't like those in perfumes either. Uh, the Allure Eau de Toilette, same, like not necessary. And I wouldn't be surprised if these get discontinued in the next five to 10 years, because I can't imagine they sell that well and they're just not a modern smell and the bottle is old fashioned and you know it's just not necessary in my opinion and then lastly my third least favorite is the chanel number no. five low so of course we all know chanel number no. five the perfume that marilyn monroe won you know just a heads up they have reformulated chanel number no. five many times over the years so the one that marilyn monroe wore isn't actually not the one you're buying now just a fyi but i feel like with this number no. five low the idea was like okay we're gonna make it modern we're gonna make it cool we're gonna make it relevant for a young girl today because Chanel number no. five is often thought of as an old-fashioned perfume. It's a very strong aldehyde perfume which is a quite dated perfume ingredient. I can't think of any successful aldehyde perfumes that are released like it's not a modern smell. But basically what they did is Chanel number no. five low it just smells basically like Chanel number no. five eau de toilette like it's too similar it's not that different enough so I don't think this was successful at all basically they've added like lemons and oranges tried to put a citrus freshness in and when you first spray it you're like oh that's a nice citrus but then you get the aldehyde and it's just like oh old-fashioned like I don't want to smell like that at all so 
you know the branding and everything it must have cost an absolute fortune and then the bottle and everything it all looks beautiful and classy just the smell is you know you might as well just get number five eau de toilette it's, it's a bit of a shame really like it could have been really cool and modern and they just they should have gone away from that original smell more it should be a whole different perfume in its own right in my opinion so that's it guys let me know which your favorites are and these favorites are from chanel i'm sure we have slightly different lists as always guys down below in the description i will leave links to where you can get these all around the world us uk europe etc and yeah do subscribe if you're not already i'll leave links to some of my other perfume review videos as well but i hope you found this interesting helpful useful do give it a thumbs up if you did and i'll see you again in my next video Bye!